Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to talk about header repeats, and do not worry, it's not going to be old theory. I'm going to show you how to do it in the ESA. It's just that I got obsessed with slides. I had um, a project to work on last week in which I had to make a lot of slides, so I kind of thought I'll use the slides um, for this video as well. So, anyways, um, so yeah, header repeats. Uh, the header repeats rule evaluates to true if at a given point in time a specified number of messages with the same subject are detected in the last one R, the last one R part. This remains static. You cannot change it. And uh, the other part is that if in the last one R for a specified number of messages, the envelope sender is repeated for a specified number of times. That's why these two to three things are extremely important to remember for this. Uh, for a specified a number of messages, which is the threshold, the last one are, it won't change its static, and it's gonna be either your subject, you're dealing with subject, or the envelope sender. Okay, I'm gonna explain more about this um, in the next slide. And after that, we're gonna jump directly into the CLI of the ESA. And then we'll talk about um, the use case. So, for example, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be very helpful to detect high volume emails, um, and an example for that would be political campaigns or spammers kind of sending you the same message over and over again, and you want to block them. Uh, you want to put a threshold of let's say 20 messages. If you receive more than uh, 20 uh, messages in one hour uh, with the same subject or the same envelope sender you want to take a certain action, maybe quarantine or drop the emails. It's completely your choice. And whenever the rule evaluates to true, a system alert is sent. I've explained uh, alerts in a separate video. Uh, you can find the video in my channel. So let's move to the second slide now. Okay, I'm going to talk about the syntax now. So it's going to be um, when you make this message filter, you're going to be like if, right? If header repeats, and then you mention three uh, pieces of information here. Uh, you see these uh, square brackets, right? Right here and here. This means that the direction part is actually optional. You don't necessarily have to mention it, but I would recommend uh, uh, always mentioning uh, direction. So the three parts are target, you have the threshold, and then you have the direction. So the target is subject or mail from, as I mentioned in the last slide as well. And then you have the threshold is the number of messages with identical values for a given target received in the last one R, beyond which the rule evaluates to true. And then you have the direction, which is incoming or outgoing or both. If you do not mention direction, let's say, as I mentioned, it's optional, right? So if you do not mention direction, it's going to take both by default, which I believe is not um, a good idea. Um, but sometimes, I, mean, I don't know, I mean, maybe in, in your case, it might uh, be helpful to go for both. But uh, usually what I've seen is um, it's, it's, uh, it's configured for incoming and not for outgoing. Um, in, in some rare cases, I've seen it uh, configured for outgoing as well. But again, uh, in that case, I've seen uh, header repeats being used uh, with other conditions as well. So it's going to be if header repeats so, so, and so, or, or an and used, and then another condition used with header repeats as well, right? Okay, now uh, this is another important thing to uh, remember. There can be a delay of one minute before this rule is triggered. Okay, so let's say the, the condition is fulfilled um, at 10.49. And then at 10.50, the rule will be triggered. So it's going to take that, it's going to have that delay of one minute. That's how it is. So let's move to the CLI and let me show you how it is configured. Okay, let's go ahead and configure it. As I mentioned, it's in the message filters. So I'm gonna run the filters command to access the message filters. Uh, I have accessed this appliance after a long time, so I just wanna check. None of these are active. Um, oh, this is from uh, the last video we did on content filters and message filters. Uh, yep, okay. Anyways, now I'm going to go ahead and say new. I'm going to say uh, test. 
don't no name it past. It's just that. Um, okay, or, or, or I'm going to say control um, campaign, right? Campaigns. Right. Okay, so I'm going to say if header repeats and then can, as I mentioned, use mail from or subject. So I can say mail from like this and then mention the threshold. Let's say the mail from repeats uh, 10 times in the last, uh, in one hour, basically. Then I want this to be triggered and I want it for incoming, uh, in the incoming direction, be applied for the incoming direction. Now, this is fine. This is completely fine. I can use it this way or I can use it with another condition. I can literally uh, delete it and then first put another condition and then use this condition. But anyways, header repeats is executed last when it's a part of multiple conditions. So if I say now or or and um, something like that, um, then it is going to go ahead and take that as a condition um, as well. But it's going to take header repeats as the last one. So uh, I can also mention if I'm if I'm sure I want to block someone someone specifically, right? I can say some like mail from and then do an equal to equal to and so on, right? I can use that. So for example, I can say son at cisco.com. I'm just using this as an example. Okay. So let's see. I think I uh, should have used maybe. Uh, so I can do a no op. Just for now, but any, anyways, um, I can use a quarantine as well. Um, pretty sure there has to be a quarantine with the name policy in there. Hit enter, put a dot. That's it. Filters added. One filters added. All right. This is how you can use it. Or um, what I would, uh, you know, also would like to show you is uh, now I'm going to just name it test quickly. So I can say if um let's say the first condition is if mail from equals to equals to um let's say empty right if mail from is empty um and then i'm going to use it as the second condition if header repeats right so i mean it, it completely depends on how you want to configure it so let's say i get a uh, blank messages a lot of them there are other ways to block it obviously but i just don't want to block all of them um i don't get bounce messages every hour um, more than 20 bounce messages every hour so i can put a header here at the header repeats condition i can mention um mail from for example and then also mention 20 so as soon as it hits 20, that means still 19, it's going to be okay. As soon as it hits 20, it's going to be like, no, that's not good. This condition is fulfilled. It's true. Now we have a problem. And uh, the action will be taken accordingly. I can do something like this and then mention, what do you want to do? I don't want to quarantine. I want to fill up that space. And I want to notify as well. So you can do stuff like this. Um, Again, uh, the administrator, or you can do admin, uh, whatever your admin's email is, admin at cisco.com, for example. Um, uh, pretty much it. And one filter is added. That's pretty much it. So this is how you do it. There are a lot of conditions and a lot of examples that I can show you for this. But I think this should be sufficient in case. Um, if you have any questions or doubts on this, um, do let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to help. Um, yeah, I think uh, this should be pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and explain uh, the contents of the message tracking. I'm going to explain what, what every entry in the message tracking means. Show you an example on that uh, in the next video, hopefully. Or maybe, I mean, that's what... Uh, my aim is for the next video, but I'm not really sure. 
Um, so yeah, if, if you have any suggestions on what kind of videos you want, just let me know. And yeah, I'll be happy to make that uh, sort of content as well. So thank you so much again. Ledger, also always remember commit. So you mentioned the commit, added a um, whatever message filter, and then you mentioned all the things, right? So this is my lab clients, and that's why I did this. Anyways, no problem. So always also make sure after that that your filter is actually in the right place. So I can list. I see it's down there at number 30. But we have two uh, um, message filters active. Uh, maybe this is a crazy. So we just configured that. I know, I'm just saying. Maybe this message filter has skip filters in it or something that may end up uh, skipping your filter for header repeats that you just configured so you may want to move it or disable the one above it if that's not in use or anything i mean whatever just just a heads up right thank you so much have a great time ahead and goodbye